Hey, hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And today I'm going to talk about well, Megan's latest R Swipes episode. And well, it was, I have to say it, it was surprisingly good. Uh, in contrast with the last, I don't know, two or three, and especially in contrast of episode nine last week, well, this was a masterpiece. The only issue that I see is that Megan went full woke and in a way that it's going to be a bit hard. I, I need to read my statement. I I'm going to read my statement on Twitter so you can understand what I'm talking about and the frame about this. I, I was going to read the Daily Mail article about that, but I think it must be a much better uh, summary if I read this, but I'm, I'm going to read it right now. So Megan has officially gone full woke. She invited a trans woman to speak about the injustices of how female sexuality is vilified. Either A, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, B, I'm going to get into a shithole full of trouble, or C, all of the above. Yeah, and, and I could... I could um, get into a lot of trouble but you know the subject matter is uh, really controversial nowadays and that lynch mob is uh, well something that one should be scared of and even megan i, I noticed that megan was very wary of, uh, of not saying anything out of place and i think that was one of the reasons she was well rather should i say in those sections quiet but she's she, she talk about herself but in the case of in, in this case i'm gonna say who, who is the name i forgot who is the name i'm gonna read this for example this is an extract from the daily mail Meghan markle today spoke of how female sexuality is so much more vilified than men's and even women in their 50s can be targeted by gossip about how they were a slut in college. I don't know who says that, who says that kind of things. I, I, that sounds like the usual, uh, it never happened, but well, let, let's, let's, uh, let's go with this. While men are described as players, women are mocked for their sexual behavior, the Duchess of Sussex said in her latest episode of her Archetypes podcast on Spotify. And I have, my, my problem was with this. Well, I don't really have a problem because nobody can have a problem with a podcast episode. You, that would be silly. Megan's comments came during a discussion with trans actress and singer Micaela Jaya Rodriguez on experiences during her teenage years. The, I think the, the main issue here is that you're talking about something as uh, big, as important, as critical like sexuality and both men's and women's sexuality is something so important in our lives and you're going to talk about you're going to address women's sexuality and okay you invite the author of sex in the city but you also invite a trans woman and don't get me wrong i'm going i'm going to i'm going to go on the record reading the rest of my statement on twitter it was not unexpected that Megan would invite a trans woman at some point. But I don't think women fancy a trans woman talking about their sexuality. Uh, to be fair, and this is something that I will be elaborating in this video, Micaela Jair Rodriguez's story of transitioning is as real as it gets. It was quite meaningful, deep insight in what it means to realize you're trans, very well developed uh, section and I'm going to explain what I mean by deep inside quite meaningful especially because this was not the usual crazy that we see for example in lips of TikTok and all, all this uh, I don't know madness that is happening especially in the United States uh, uh, just by the way that she was telling the story that at seven years old she just felt different and she wanted to like act in a certain way. She felt quite feminine at that age, but she couldn't quite express that verbally. Well, that that fits. That's something that is that is normal in trans women. 
And it was not until 14 years old that she had the, well, I, I think I can sit down and speak time to my mother. That also, uh, it's, it's uh, I, I can say that at that age, we are already sure of what we like or what we don't like. Well, at, that, at that age, well, I, I absolutely <laughs> knew that, well, women were the uh, most delicious thing in the world. And I really appreciate that her story was no pushing any agenda, but, but was more from a personal perspective. The struggles, of course, expressing your sexuality the way you want it to really be. I think trans people need more stories like this. Because what we have seen on TikTok, all these people trying to like ram that down our throats, uh, that is not helping at all. That is, uh, in fact, making people reject the idea, making people uh, say that, well, this is just insane. Of course, there are topics that we can argue all that you want. That is, for example, uh, trans women competing in women's sports, which I don't agree. I think sports should be uh, uh, reclassified in XX and XY. And that's it. You have the chromosomes of this category. Well, go ahead. You can compete. You don't have the chromosomes. Well, you you have to compete in the uh, chromosomes category that fits your chromosomes. And that would be fair. I think I think that would be fair. And uh, the fact that well, weirdos could take advantage of those uh, same-sex restrooms rule and do disgusting things and think that our daughters are gonna be with this kind of people and could be taken advantage of is nothing short of terrifying. And we have to uh, think about that. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that people like Michaela are, are aware that this problem exists that this is a real problem, that we can't say that every single person, that you cannot judge anybody that goes in the wrong restroom because you know that there are people that are always going to take advantage of these rules. And the problem is that there are girls in these restrooms. And it's, it's, it's something that can go extremely wrong in so many ways. And yeah, we're facing a complete destruction of the sanity of the mental health of the world and it starts from a deep confusion of the youth and I also mentioned Michaela's age when she mentioned this milestone at seven she knew that well there's something uh, just not quite right but seven she mentioned that she felt quite different and that's it and it was not until 14 years old that she had this, well, this way of uh, expressing that verbally, like being able to sit down with her mother and express that, that she was, she was coming off as a, as a trans woman. And not like these parents that say that, hey, uh, the, the kid, the three-year-old kid is already transgender. That, that, is, that is nonsense. That is not, you have to be really crazy about all, all, all this stuff going on. I, I, I would like to talk more about this but the fact is that this topic still disturbs me to a point that there's so many things that i would like to say i know that megan was also tiptoeing in this and um, because uh, yes i think nobody wants to get cancelled over this discussion but one thing that i'm going to tell you is that homeschooling is going to be more and more popular i hope so I certainly hope so. Following on my statement, Candace Bushnell of Sex and the City also felt quite real. Megan let her talk more than usual and this is an opinion from a man, remember? Her remarks about women's current struggles with their sexuality and profession were on point. But there's one more thing. The first 10 minutes of Megan interviewing the teens of her Former school also were a lot more natural and fluid than her usual. Hey, this is about me, Stick. All in all, experience has paid off. Megan's experience on her previous episodes or 
which is most probably, with I I said in a in a later tweet, most probably this was a change, some kind of a change in the production team. This has had to be a change in the production team to be able to put out a really good episode. I have to say. Maybe have this, like uh, s women's sexuality, and let's call it trans women for that. Uh, I think it was a misstep. But all in all, the experience has paid off, in spite of the stated in the first tweet, what I just said. This is her best episode so far. Now, I have to say about, I have to say something about that, uh, really fine of exploration of their sexuality. I mean, which... Uh, are, aren't women like more free than they were like 40 years ago? Are women really still being vilified for exploring their sexuality? With so many women uh, of almost any age uh, going to OnlyFans and opening an account and empowering themselves, earning money by doing what the market wants. I, I don't know. It's... Uh, is that really frowned upon? What what is he again? Is that Megan is trying to is trying to um, point out that these struggles that happened a lot of decades ago, but they are not that reflected anymore. They they are not that current. They are not current anymore. So it's it's nice that people like. What is her name? I forgot her name. Uh, forgot her name. What is her name? Candace Bushnell. Bushel. Candace Bushel. It's nice that Candace Bushel could lead the conversation in something that was actually um, redeemable. Yeah, redeemable from Megan's podcast. Because, okay, she had some struggles as a younger woman. But right now, she ha had... In her, with her profession, that's understandable. She's still ah, oh, wow, you you can't do this, you can't do that, and this that's something that is still is still happening. There's still some sexism everywhere. It's still happening, but at the same time, I, I think uh, there's so many opportunities for women nowadays that saying that they are absolutely constrained that we can't say that anymore. It's like saying that, well, people are being exploited by capitalism, by corporations, and etc. But there's so many ways of earning money uh, by yourself on the internet, and not only OnlyFans, of course, that, well, that argument that, oh, we are being exploited by capitalism doesn't uh, apply anymore. So in so many ways, technology has helped us uh, really empower ourselves and be independent ourselves. You YouTubers are proof of that. And that's why I, I, I know what Megan wants to talk about. I know that she wants to talk about that. Well, the slut shaming, there's still slut shaming. I don't think women care about that slut shaming the same way as 20 or 30 years ago. And the problem is that talking about sexuality, you should have talked to a, a biological woman. And yes, why not? At some point, invite a trans woman to your, to your podcast, but talk about the struggles of trans women that are very unique. And that would have, in that, with that frame, Michaela's story would have fit perfectly perfectly but well all in all I have to say it was it was a nice uh, what nice episode uh, it was interesting it was even interesting the way she interacted with these girls um, at, at, at her former school but the same problem as always it still arises how many times can she keep repeating these stereotypes or archetypes or uh, whatever there's still two episodes left we are going to see what, is gonna, what she going to come up with uh, next week. My Royal Rogues, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue, and I would love to know what do you think about Megan going full woke this time. Let me know in the comments. 
Much love and bless.